Dear Thriver, welcome to Thriver TV, where I can help you learn more about narcissists. And today is definitely one of those days because we're going to look at one of the different type of narcissists, as well as how to heal from narcissistic abuse. Now, I know there's a lot out there about covert narcissists, and most definitely I wanna help you identify them, but also to what it is within you that might be unconsciously hooking you up with them so that you can actually heal for, from them. All right, so before I get started, I just wanna remind you to make sure that you've pressed the notification button so that you can make sure that you are subscribed to this incredible healing uh, community and also so that you know when each new video is going to be released. All right, so let's talk about covert narcissists. Many of you ask about them a lot, how they present, what they do, the damage they cause, and of course, how to break away and heal from them. I wanna start off with the obvious differences between the covert and the overt narcissist, because coverts are not as obvious as the normal narcissist. The traditional definition of a narcissist is somebody who's got a really big, arrogant personality. It's somebody who is entitled, they're selfish, they're demanding. But before you get to know that, you start to see that they have this air of superiority and they can even grandstand and be grandiose. But they appear really confident and charming and funny and witty. They're the life of the party. And people often gravitate to this type of narcissistic personality in droves because they're infectious and they're all shiny and exciting. Society often rewards these types of people. Now, the problem with the usual recognition of narcissist is that the covert narcissist can slip under the radar. And the interesting thing about the covert is that there is still the arrogance and the superiority of the traditional narcissist, yet it's much harder to spot and it can be easy to miss. The covert narcissist is the one likely to be sitting at the back of the room. They don't take the limelight. They can appear shy, introverted, and they have more than a touch of the victim personality. These are people who have got much less finesse, they don't have the social skills and they're not really comfortable with people and groups of people like a traditional narcissist is. The covert is somebody who feels hard done by and when you engage with them, you'll find out that they have this victim personality. They will talk about how others have done the wrong thing by them and how they've had limitations and less opportunities and how others are against them in the world. And we're gonna go into that in greater detail in this video. Whereas the overt narcissist who appears really positive and really happy, they often ensnare people with their charm and their power apparent and their success and their big personalities. Whereas covert narcissists hunt more discreetly they sidle up to people who may start feeling sorry for them. People who are attracted to helping and loving these people through their vulnerabilities and their anxieties and the losses that they've had in their life. And again, we're gonna break that down even more as well. So let's have a look at one of the significant differences, which is hot versus cold narcissism. Over narcissists are more of the hot type and the covert is the less obvious cold type. Overt narcissists are up and down in a kind of bipolar way. The overt narcissist is really black or white. Everything is either great or it's terrible. They're happy and as high as a kite and just completely delightful, or they're down, angry, nasty, and hugely confrontational. An overt narcissist is likely to tell you straight to your face in a really direct way how they feel about you. And it can be nasty and name calling and, and they'll do that when they're feeling triggered and they're down and they lash out and they attack. Now, cold narcissists don't have that kind of black and white personality. I'm either up or I'm down. Covert narcissists are usually more depressed and miserable and anxious than not. They're really happy. 
They're extremely draining to be around and they're very passive aggressive in their comments and I'm going to give you some examples of this. And these are the comments that chip away at your soul. So they'll say things to you like when they're trying to put you down rather than straight to your face, they'll say something like, if only your friends knew who you really are or clearly you have a certain relationship with your boss for him to look after you the way he does. And you know that this person is making accusations about you, but it's in a really hurtful, non-direct, passive aggressive kind of way. It's quite insidious. And of course, in true narcissistic, the reaction, if you address this, is that you're gonna see the narcissistic three ring circus, which is denial, projections, defensives, defenses and all the games that make your head spin when you try to call them out on it. And it's the same with the hot type, but the hot type will be more vicious, whereas the cold type will be more condescending and passive aggressive. Now let's have a look at omnipotent versus victimized narcissism. Overt narcissists have a literal God complex. They believe they're indestructible, they can do anything, conquer anything, have anything, and they will even put themselves into ridiculously dangerous, immoral and reckless situations. Overt narcissists crash and burn often. They'll dust themselves off, leave their disasters with everybody else to clean up and just restart their life again on a different set, like a different stage play. And of course, they don't learn from their mistakes. Whereas the covert narcissist, on the other hand, is the perpetual victim. They believe the world is against them. They're incredibly negative. They think everybody's out to get them. They don't get going. They don't improve themselves. They don't take risks. They don't put themselves out there. And it's everybody else's fault. And if you try to push them into improving themselves or just do something, they're gonna lash out at you and they're going to blame you for their victimhood and you're the enemy. They'll just put you in the basket with everybody and everything else that is against them. They're enmeshed in their victim story and their miserableness and they will take you down with them. Anyone who will stay with them. They believe they never got a fair go. They believe life owes them. And of course you owe them. They're not happy with anything much in their life. And they're definitely not happy with you and how you relate to them. It doesn't matter what you try to do for them. They're gonna criticize you, blame you, judge you, tell you it's your fault. It's never good enough. It doesn't matter what you do or what you don't do or how much money or effort you throw at them to try to help them, it's your fault. So I know a lot of you will be relating to this if you are dealing with a covert narcissist because it's beyond maddening. Now let's have a look at extroverted versus introverted narcissism. Overt narcissists like company. They seek direct narcissistic supply through people and groups, acclaim, notoriety, attention all of that stuff. And this is how, and they get it through charm and warmness and generosity, of course, to the outer environment. If you're in a close inner environment, you know it can be very different. Overt narcissists feel much more confident in social interactions than covert narcissists who are much more introverted, secluded, and paranoid around people. They often really feel out of their depth around people. The covert narcissist will try to devalue your interactions with others. They will talk about people disparagingly behind their backs, make you feel guilty about socializing, like you don't love them enough or you enjoy other people's attention more than time with them and they're gonna make passive aggressive comments about that. And they will go to social events with you where they are so uncomfortable that it makes you feel uncomfortable. 
They'll be in the person in the corner, sullen, moody, anxious. And you may feel like you just have to leave to try to keep them happy. Okay, so let's have a look at, so there's some of the differences, but let's have a look at some of the common qualities that covert narcissists have with traditional narcissists, but yet there's a bit of a twist. Let's have a look at it. So when you look deeper at the similarities between the covert and the overt, you'll see it's narcissism, it really is. It's just that it presents a little differently. So first of all, all narcissists are inherently depressed, meaning that they've disconnected from their true self because as a narcissist with a false self, they've really buried and thrown their inner being aside. They don't want to look at how they really feel about themselves or their wounds or their development or their healing. They just want to put a fictitious character that they're going to live their life through. And what that means is that all narcissists, the covert and the overt, are actually drug addicts, meaning they're empty on the inside and they need narcissistic supply. So they all need attention, significance, people's life force and resources to keep feeding their insatiable false self. And it's like a black hole because it can't maintain its own energy force, its own peace, its own happiness, its own fullness. The overt narcissist pretends to be up and positive and in love with life because that's how they attract people to them for narcissistic supply. Yet, as a close intimate behind closed doors, you'll see it's far from the truth. So when the facade crashes with an overt narcissist, as it regularly does, then they're going to be sullen, angry, needy for attention, which means they're entitled, they're arrogant, they're demanding. And in fact, as time goes on, it becomes impossible to please the overt narcissist. They'll come in from the outside and they're full of narcissistic supply and then they get triggered off into their wounds and they get down and depressed and it seems like they're quite you know, up and then down. They're either black or they're white. However, the covert narcissist displays their depression much more transparently. They're more obviously irritable, moody, sullen, passive aggressive, depressed, victimized. And they are very needy, demanding and entitled, which of course means blaming you for how they're feeling and trying to hold you responsible for fixing how they're feeling. Here's the thing too, you know, we might think that the overt narcissist is the one that has this big grandiosity and this entitlement and this arrogance, but the covert narcissist still has it as well, just with a bit of a twist. Now here is how it's different. An overt narcissist will tell you, I'm the best at something and they grandstand. Whereas the covert narcissist will tell you the only reason they're not recognized by everybody as the best at something is because they just didn't get the breaks that other people had. That's the victim story. And the competitiveness and the superiority that are trademarks of narcissism still apply with both, both types. Yet here is the difference. The overt narcissist will put themselves in the event or the competition or the class, trying to beat everybody publicly and bang their chest. Whereas the covert narcissist won't involve themselves, but they're gonna make haughty excuses like, there's no point me even lowering myself to a competition where the judges scoring the results don't even know as much as what I do about this topic. That's how they pass it off. Now, pathological jealousy is something that both covert and overt narcissists both have. And this is how it expresses a little bit differently. The overt narcissist may love to name drop about people's successes and accomplishments and brag about other people because they think that it makes them look more superior to people. And also too, they may sidle up with these people to try and get elevated positions up the ladder as a result of 
being on these people's coattails. And then of course, when they get to the same level, then they'll start destroying them. You know, this is just what they do. And it's all about, I'm so great because I know so-and-so and you know, so-and-so is helping me get to where I wanna get and that's kind of how they do it. And it's the close intimates, like their love partners or their family um, and people around them their success may be, especially a love partner, the thing that the overt narcissist will belittle, degrade and sabotage. Because how dare you steal the attention away from me when we have friends or family over, it's that kind of thing. Now with a covert narcissist, they will arrogantly discard, dis, dis, discredit other people's success. And they're going to have this arrogant victim story about how they know better, they are better. You know, they've got all these unseen and unrecognized skills, gifts and talents. And it's only because these people got the breaks that the covert narcissist never got. And it was because those people just, you know, forget about the hard work that they did and the effort. It was just good luck. And it's just bad luck that the, the covert never um, hit success and they also find a way to discredit anybody who is gutsy who taste, takes risks and who puts themselves out there and backs themselves because the covert narcissist doesn't generate their own life and they continually make excuses for why they don't they mock other people's success and of course according to the covert narcissist their own lack of success was just their bad luck or because, you know, life attacked them and other people tried to bring them down. Okay, now here is a very important question that I want to look at because let's all take our power back because that's what Thriver Healing is all about and we have to get real to heal. So what draws people to covert narcissists? What does? And it's a really important question because these people seem like such a misery. Who would want to be with them? And they're nowhere near as shiny and as attractive as overt narcissists, which you could be forgiven for, you know, falling for until you know better and you've developed and heal yourself. Okay, so it's so interesting how many people do a covert narcissist after an overt narcissist. Not all the time but it does happen a lot. Maybe you've already experienced a big brash overt narcissist and you very mindfully tried to choose somebody who's more unassuming, quieter, and less obviously grandiose. Yet, as many of us have painfully experienced, if we still haven't healed our inner love code from our past traumas and we're still, we're still carrying them, Things like the people I love invalidate, abuse me and emotionally annihilate me. Then again, we will often find ourselves in relationships with another narcissist who brings us more of these traumas again that we haven't yet healed. Even though we thought we were choosing a different person, we've still got a narcissist just a different flavor of narcissist this time. And I absolutely did that with my second narcissist. I still had some unhealed stuff I hadn't worked through yet. Also inside many of us is the desire to rescue. We're attracted to vulnerabilities and getting behind somebody who we think needs love and a better chance at life. Covert narcissists will share their sob stories very early on. If you're empathetic and kind in nature, you feel really sorry for these people about the childhood abuse and the terrible things that they've suffered at the hands of others. You may feel protective and that bonds you to them deeply. You may also hang on and on to these people in the cognitive dissonance of he or she is like that because of their childhood. I can understand why they behave like that you make excuses and justifications for their behavior, no matter how badly they treat you. At the deeper levels of our inner being, if we've had relationships with family members, usually parents, but it could be any family member, 
who was damaged and vulnerable and we were trying to fix them so that they could be healthy enough to love us then we're going to be naturally subconsciously attracted to and attractive to victims who need fixing. We're unconsciously trying to right the wrongs of our childhoods, yet only deeply ripping open these wounds to relive them all over again. We're trying to be the parent to someone who we didn't receive ourselves. And again, our needs and our values and our truths are not going to be met. And as we all know, getting involved, enmeshed and trauma bonded to narcissists creates very big losses on every level of our life and our health, as we know. So how to heal from covert narcissists? The most powerful way and really the only way for real to heal from covert narcissists is to detach from them, stop trying to change them because you can't change any narcissist, no matter how many shapes you try to twist yourself into. And instead, turn inwards to heal yourself up and out of the internal trauma bonds that are keeping you ensnared with them. If you recognize that you're enmeshed with a covert narcissist or not yet recovered from one, then I highly recommend my free webinar. I'd love you to come into it so that you can learn more about quantum freedom healing, the narcissistic abuse recovery program, and how, which is known as NARP, and how it can quickly and powerfully dissolve your trauma bonds so that you can start to get your sanity, your power, your life and your soul back from this madness that's ripping you apart. So I hope today has helped grant you some clarity and what to look out for with those tricky, insidious coverts who are less obvious so you can get clear. It's still narcissism. And uh, I look forward to your comments and your questions about this. And as always, keep smiling, keep healing and keep thriving because there is nothing else to do. Okay. Lots of love. Bye-bye.